What's up guys, Ormac here, and today I'll be talking about the Unspeakable Oath, the next Mythos pack in the Arkham um, card game. Uh, it's the second Mythos pack on the Path to Carcosa uh, cycle, and it will be come out this Friday, at least here in Sweden. So that will be the 20, 24th. So we only have one article about it, but all the cards have been spoiled now, so I'll be going through them and talk about them. Um, I haven't looked at them in great detail, so it'll be like a second impression of them. I have read them all, um, but I haven't really done a thorough, thorough thought on them. So let's jump right into it, let's just see that we're recording correctly. Make sure to so um let's bring that up the first card it's a guardian card uh trench knife it's an asset uh cost one and has a fight icon item weapon and melee so we have seen that before on a lot of handheld weapons the machete and st all knives and stuff so <coughs> engage at Engage action you perform does not provoke attack of opportunity. And then it has a fight. You get plus X combat for this attack. X is the number of engaged enemy with you. And it takes up one hand slot. So it's a weapon. It's an alternative to, well, the 45, the Colt and the Machete, which are probably the three most used. Um, guardian weapons. So what does it do? You can do the engage action without uh, provoke attack of opportunity. So if you have an enemy on you, you can engage another enemy, uh, ending you up with two or more enemies. So why would you want more enemies? Well, <coughs> this weapon lets you get a combat boost for every enemy. So if you only have one enemy, this is just plus one combat. If you have two enemies, this is plus two. If you have three enemies, that's plus three combat, which is okay. And it's cheap, but it lacks the, the like most important part about every weapon, which is the plus, com uh, plus damage trait. So if we compare this to the machete, for example, Whoops, that's... Oh, sorry about that. I hope you guys couldn't hear that. I have to lower my, my volume. <laughs> so if we compare this to the machete, which always does give us one plus damage and do... Uh, plus one combat and do one damage if it's the only enemy engage. I mean, the machete is superly better because why would you want to use a weapon? You do it because you want the damage. And if you want like to soak up all the enemies just take taunt instead um if you're playing someone like zoe which benefits from it i think taunt is better how often do you see yourself engaged with like three enemies to get the the worth out of this otherwise you could just run something like beat cop or physical training or military training the new one i can't remember so yeah I'm I think this is a card that will go into the folder quite quite fast. But I might be proven wrong. Tell me what you guys think. So let's move on. Oh no. Okay. So our second card. Uh it's an event. Cost two and one experience. Intellect and combat pips. Ambushed. And it's a tactic. Attached to your location. If there are no investigators attached to, if there are no investigators at the attached location, discard ambush. Forced after an enemy spawns an attached location, deals two, two damage to that enemy and discard ambush. This seems pretty good. Uh, so it costs one experience, uh, which might be a problem for guardians because they. There's quite a lot you want in Guardian. You want Speed Cup, you want Savior, probably want Lightning Gun, Key 9, and uh, I had worse. Stand together, yeah, a lot. 
there's a lot of <coughs> fighting for this. So what do you do? You pay two. It's not a fast, so you have to do it during the investigator phase. You pay two and put it on your location. And then if you leave that location and you're the last one leaving, ambush gets guarded. So you're kind of forced to have to be at that location. But if an enemy spawns, it'll do two damage, which is enough to kill a lot of enemies. Uh, most, not most, but a lot of stuff from the encounter deck will either die or get severe damage by this. Do damage is quite a lot, unless it's to like a boss. I think this also works like very well with aloof enemies, like the whipper whales and those cultists in the last, in the um, unspeakable oaf. No, th this is that one. Um, what was the last one called? Um, Echoes to the past. With those aloof enemies. So it's good against aloof. Because they're usually more annoying to take, to take care of. Uh, and also on bosses. It, if you know a boss is going to spawn. At a specific location. Might be good. I don't see you. Like. When you're setting up, you usually like take a turn and set up. I don't see you playing ambush then, because if someone, if you all leave their location, ambush gets discarded, which is a big clause to it, I believe. Uh, but yeah, uh, it looks pretty good. Oops. So let's continue. This is Shawl Ross. Eh. Shawl Ross. Shawl's Ross. Um an asset costs two and has an intellect icon and it's an ally patron you may spend resource to pay for item assets played by other investigators at your location and then you can exhaust charge uh, reduce the cost of the next item asset played by an investigator at your location by one it has one hp one health and two horror and it takes up the ally slot so um it's a secret card which lets you which lets you pay for other players item cards which might be good um there are a lot of because you usually might run like a guardian and a seeker together and this guardian is usually poor especially roland uh so having like um rex or daisy which is usually quite loaded on money being able to pay for your weapons might not be too bad. He takes up the ally slot, so he's competing with uh, Christopher Milan, which might be a problem. Uh, you usually run at least one Charisma in Seekers, it's not too bad. Um, and I, I mean, he, he doesn't generate money as Christopher does, but he kind of saves you money. So in a way, if you have play at least two assets, items you get him for well you don't get him for free but you have saved those two which you have already paid to play him uh, he might be good i think um i mean it, it definitely depends on who, you, who you're playing with uh i don't think he's very good in solo because then the, this first ability doesn't do anything but if you're playing with someone like uh, safina which only plays event then you're not going to get much use out of this, or someone like, I don't know, Agnes, because spells aren't items, right? No. No. There aren't too many items in um, Mystics. There are some grotesque statues and stuff like that. But yeah, he, he seems nice. Um, definitely try him out. So... <clears throat> Another uh, seeker. This is forewarned. It's an event, cost zero to play, but one XP agility, one XP pip, <laughs> and uh, the will power. Um, so insight fast play when you draw non weakness treachery card. Place one clue of your locate. Place one of your clues on your location. Then cancel that card's revelation effect. Knowing is half the battle. So you probably have seen this card already. Um, it's in the core set. It is called uh, Ward of Protection. 
So if you compare these two cards, let's see, can we zoom in this one, this one? Yeah. You see that they do very similar. The first sentence, pass, when you draw on weakness, treachery card are the same. And the last enemy, that cancel card revelation effect. Cancel card revelation effect. The only difference is like what you pay for them. So Word of Protection, it's a staple card in the Magic. I think you always run at least one Word of Protection if you can. Most Mystics run two because stopping um, Treachery cards can be so good. Like, um, yeah, stuff li like which straight up will kill you if you take like two damage or two horror or uh, yeah, there's stop tons of stuff. Locked door can really shut down um, a seeker. Locked door is yeah, it's a revelation effect. So if you play it, you ignore its entire and it it in the entire two. So what do you pay? Obviously, you pay one experience for it to put it in your deck, which isn't too bad for most for seekers. You usually just want higher education, and then you pretty much set up. Oh, of course, there's other stuff, but placing one clue of your location for Rex, that is not a problem. He'll scoop that one right up. Um, for the other two, like Ming and uh, Ming, Roland, and uh, Daisy are the ones that can take it, I believe. Might be someone else. Uh, none of them have too much problem getting that clue back up. It's just the fact that it'll cost you probably an action to get it or a card to get it. You might not need the clue. You don't always need clues to complete scenarios. There might be another objective like killing something or getting somewhere. Um, compared to World of Protection where you just take a horror. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's a word of protection and seeker, which is super good. Daisy can run four word of protections that way, which seems really good. Observe though, a common mis misinterpretation is that you just cancel the revelation effect. You don't cancel the entire card. So if the card has something like surge, uh, you still draw another card. Yeah, so that's forewarned. Cost zero compared to one, which might be a big deal. Probably not for Zeker. So let's move into Rogue. So this is Dario El Amin. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, so it's an asset, costs four, uh, has an intellect um, pip, and it's an ally, ally and a patron as well. So this is the card that has been spoiled for quite some time. So while you have 10 or more research, you get plus one will and plus one intellect. And there's an action. If there's no enemy at your location, exhaust Dario, gain two resources. So there's a card that's similar to this in the Dunwich um, cycle, but that's a story asset. So I'm not gonna go too much into that. Um, but yeah, so you can always, not click, but you can always spend an action to get one resources. With Dario, you'll get two resources. Um, yes, two H, two health, and two horror as well, and take the alloy slot. <coughs> and if you manage to get plus ten, you get will and intellect, which are two good stats, two important stats. Um, I mean, someone like Skid really liked that the will boost. 10 or more reasons, that's a lot. I mean, you have to get up there, and the worst part, I don't think it's too hard to get up there, but you have to stay up there. And a lot of rogue cards are expensive. Um, so yeah, like backstab, that's three. Drown the drain immediately, and let's see, what, what kind of rogue cards are there? I don't know, I think you're supposed to do the other way. I mean, they they cost a lot. Backstab, three. Cat Burglar, four. The Chicago Writer, five. Himself cost four. Yeah. 
But yeah, probably the most um, important part about him is that he takes up the ally slot. And Rogue has the best ally in Leo de Luca, which gives you an extra action each turn, which is so useful. Um, so you'll be competing for, with Leo for that ally spot until you have uh, Charisma. And I, I don't see why you... I don't know if you would pick Dario over Leo. Um, yeah. The thing is, you can only do this once a turn also, because he exhausts. So you cannot like spend three actions and get six resources. You can only get two each turn. I'm not completely sold on him. I might have to try him out. Um, yeah. Let's let's move on. Oops. So this is sneak attack, and if you have played this game a bit, you might recognize this card. So let's see. We already have this card. Let's let's read the one first. So it's an event. Costs two uh, resources and two XP. Has one intellect and two combat pips. Sneak attack tactic. Deal two damage to an enemy. Not engage with you. Not engage with you at your location. So let's compare it to the to the original level zero. So deal two damage to an exhaust enemy at your location. It costs the same. So this upgraded sneak attack, I think, is so much so much better. I I'm in the camp where I say that the the level zero sneak attack is quite bad because you're spending one action to exhaust the enemy another action to do the sneak attack so that's two damage in two actions which isn't favorable uh the sneak attack level two though this one uh lets you do two damage as long as the enemy is not engaged with you so you can still evade it and then uh, sneak attack it but the thing about this sneak attack is you can use it on aloof enemies so that's the second card in this uh set which deals two damage to an aloof enemy if a whipper will spawn, you can just play sneak attack on it, immediately kill it. Um, or if an uh, enemy is engaged with another, if an enemy is engaged with another investigator, you can sneak attack it. Two damage is a lot, as we said. It's enough to kill all, um, most enemies, the smaller ones, which your seeker might have problem dealing with. So yeah, uh, definitely a good card. It is in Rogue, which has quite a lot of expensive um, XP cards, but I definitely see myself including this one. And it's two test less damage, which is an important part. Because um, avoiding test is super important, especially in higher difficulty like uh, Hard and Expert. So you, you definitely should think about including Sneak Attack. Okay, let's move on to the Mystic card. So, this is Storm of Spirits. It's a super cool picture. Uh, Reminds me of a Netrunner card, which I want on Destruction if you have ever played that game. Let's see if we can find one from Destruction Netrunner. Yeah, a lot of people have made this comparison. But they look quite a lot. Uh, let's see, it's not the same artist, right? No, it's not. Anyway, let's look at this card. Storm of Spirits. It's an event, a uh, mystic card. Cost 3. That's a will and combat icon. Uh, fight. Uh, spell. Spell trait. Fight. This attack uses will instead of combat. If you succeed, instead of its standard damage, this attack deals 2 damage to each enemy at your location, and additional damage is dealt to the attacked enemy. If a skull, a cultist, tablet, cartoon, or auto fail symbol is revealed during this attack, deal 1 damage to each investigator at your location. So this is like, um, kind of like um, dynamite blast, kind of. So the, Common misperception is that this is like an asset you play, which you can use again and again, but no, this is an event, so it's a one-time use only. Um, 
this clearly gets better the more enemies there are at your location and you probably always want to use this at the weakest enemy in your location so if you have like a pack of rats and um, two ghouls uh, aim at the rat because they'll all take two damage there's additional damage you can't play this with um, vicious blow to get the additional damage but if like how do you get more damage uh, if Zoe get draws her uh, elder sign so let's see so we so if so we draw our elder sign she does one additional damage during this attack so we can take this card she can take five out of class you'll do that extra damage to only to the enemy you selected uh, and if you manage to draw one of the special tokens you can still succeed so you can do two damage to each enemy and one damage to all investigators so it's like a big bomb it's on the expensive side uh, you can use it with the uncage the soul but if you use it with uncage the soul and, and you're engaged with an enemy the enemy will attack you before you and just storm a spirit step it's a cool card uh, i'm really liking how they managed to give uh, keep coming up with new ways to deal out damage yeah so this is book of shadow you also probably have seen this card from the core set uh, but this is a um, i will go into how, how they differ but book of shadow cost three has cost one experience it's an asset with intellect icon it's an item tome exhaust book of shadow and spend one resource Add one charge to a spell asset you control and takes up the hand slot. So let's look at the Book of Shadow. So this is the Book of Shadow from the core set. As you see, this one is actually less expensive in the XP term. And it's actually one uh, resource cheaper, I realized. Um, so that's the first time I think we have ever seen a card getting cheaper. Might be fun, but I don't think so. So the original one gives you an additional arcane slot, and you exhaust the Book of Shadow and add one charge to yours to a spell as you control. Here you have to pay a resource as well to add that uh, charge to the spell, and it doesn't give you an extra arcane slot. So, um, which is better then? Well. You don't really need the extra arcane slot. Uh, we're not that packed for arcane slot at this moment. Uh, paying one resource to put a charge on a spell asset you control. I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, the main thing about Book of Shadows is that they now can take the level. This is why I don't spell uh, right. <laughs> Is that Daisy, a librarian, can take it because she can take level 0 to level 2 mystic cards. So she couldn't take the original Book of Shadow, which was a huge bumper. Because she can have uh, as spell with the charges on them, like Shivering and Rite of Seeking. But the new Book of Shadow she can take, and with her ability, she can use this um, action for free. So now we actually have a Book of Shadow for Daisy, so she's happy. It's a tome and she desperately need more tomes. However, uh, it is free to use this action with Daisy. However, you cannot use another um, tome. Uh, and so, okay, I'm not even going to try to spell an encyclopedia. Um... So if you're using Book of Shadow, you cannot use another tome. Well, you can, but that'll cost you an action then. Um, so depending on... <coughs> I think it's clearly depends on like how your team is set up. If you're going to be the support role more, like getting clues, you might just want to run as a DJ and ignore Book of Shadow. But Book of Shadow level 1 is not a bad card for AC. Um, I don't think you wanted to run it though in the Mystic. 
Uh, Agnes doesn't really need it. Um, Jim doesn't really need it, and Akechi definitely doesn't need it. So, yeah. You might want to run it like Agnes in the beginning, I'm, I'm not sure. So let's move on. I'm trying to keep a bit uh, quicker paced, because my videos usually get like one hour away, or 25 minutes now. So that's pretty good pace. <clears throat> so this is, we're moving into the survivor cards. This is an event, uh, fight or flight. It's an event, cost one, spirit traded, fast, play only during your turn. Until the end of the round, you get plus X combat and plus agility, for X is the amount of horror on you. So there's a lot of cards with horror theme on them. Uh, so in the last pack, if you remember, we got the four uh, desperate cards, or whatever they're, you, you want to call them, which... Um, Gave us four will, four intellect, four combat, and four uh, agility. If we had three or fewer remaining sanity, this is in the same theme. So let's say we have. Well, if you have four horror on you, then this is like the superior version, definitely. Um, because this is for the entire turn, so you'll get three or four turns out of that. Let's look at the. Um, can we select just the. Um, uh, type I want the investigators. There we go. So let's see. Ash can Pete. He has only have 5 sanity. So even if you put 4 on him, it's not super good. When did, on the other hand, she can probably have like a. You could put 6 sanity on her. Well. It depends if you have drawn her weakness, because you can always take those two direct horrors, so you should definitely be careful about them. York has six, so they all are kind of low, I realize. Uh, but I mean, even if you have like three or four horror on Yorick, you could even have five, as long as there's no direct horror. Uh, imagine if you have three and play this card, then you'll get plus three combat for an entire turn for one resource. That seems really good. Uh, and if you have to ditch, you always has that agility. Because this is the, until the end of your turn. So it's not for one test. Um, yeah, it's a cool card. Uh, I have no idea what's going on really in the picture. It's like a monster breaking in through the door. You have to play around it. You have to put horror on yourself, knowing that you have this card in your deck. Uh, but yeah, imagine getting that plus five combat. Then, then even Wendy can take care of stuff with her puny one in combat. It's a cool card. So, next survivor card. This is a test of will. It's an event, costs one resource and one experience, and has the willpower I, uh, pip. Fast play when an investigator at your location draws a non weakness treachery card. Cancel the card's revelation effect and exile a test of will. So first things first, I don't play um, a test of will. Um, what is it called? Uh, Game of no Lord. I think there's a test of will in the Lord of Ring. Yeah. I think it's supposed to do the same thing. Response, cancel when revealed effect of a card that was just revealed from the encounter deck. So that sounds really similar. Uh, there's a guy like standing. So this card is clearly like a montage or I don't know, tribute to that card. Anyway, so it's the same card. And we already saw this card in, in uh, this pack just recently, right? The Forewarned, which has quite similar effect. Uh, this one costs... So, there's a lot of stuff about Test of Will. So, it has the same effect as uh, Word of Protection and Forward that you cancel the card revelation effect. However, Test of Will lets you play on any investigator at your location. So, at the end of the, your turn, people might just run back to, the, to Wendy to... <laughs> have her protect you. 
Uh, you don't excite. So there's no downside like you get damage or put clues, but you excite it. So it's an experience point. So three different. You either take horror or sp lose a clue or exile a card. Um, and I don't know. Exiling in the survivor isn't that bad. Um, I usually don't really know what to put in in my survivor decks. Um, I usually put in like a flares, but they usually don't do anything for me. So a test of will, I definitely want to include. Um, with Jorik, with his signature card, which stacks up more experience, you shouldn't be too afraid of using this either. So now we have three out of the five factions, which has uh, like a revelation cancel effect. I guess you could say, let me handle this from the Guardian is one. So the only ones that doesn't have one is Rogue at the current, current point in the game. So it's a cool card. Definitely gonna gonna check it out. And then Survivor actually got a third card. So this is Devil's Luck. Uh, it's an event as well. Cost one experience and one resource. It's the agility pip. <coughs> Fortune. So Rex couldn't take this anyway because uh, it's level one. Fast. Play when you are dealt damage and or horror. Cancel up to 10 damage and or horror you just dealt to you. And ex exile devil's luck. That was my favorite hat. So it's like a soup. It's like a dodge on. Well, dodge is actually better. No. The thing is, you can do this on. It doesn't have to be damage or horror from enemies. It can be from uh, encounter cards as well. Thing is, if you draw this like with a, what's the what is it called, uh, rotting remains, which tests three well for each point you fail by take one horror. So you could take three horror with this card. Do you want to play Devil's Luck on it to cancel that? Maybe if you're surviving, but you'd rather play like the the teddy bear or something. There are a card off. Though that a uh, bit of spoiler for the first scenario in the um, Dunwich. Uh, I don't know how you, how you spell it. This one. Okay. Beyond. Here we go. Beyond the Veil. It's an encounter card where if you have no cards in your deck, you take 10 damage. Hmm, 10 damage. Sound familiar? Um, so if you, Devil's Luck is a good counter to be on the Veil, which is like a staple card in the Dunwich uh, cycle. Can, like, this mitigates this card entirely. It'll be really satisfying also to cancel 10 damage. But there's other ways, a lot of boss enemies, uh, not a lot, but a couple of boss enemies can hit you for 3 horror and 3 damage. So cancelling that is 6, which might be good. Uh, it's a cool card. I think you... I think it gets better if you know what's coming and how to... when to use it. Yeah. So last card. So it's a neutral card. We didn't get one. Yeah, we did the 4 desperate cards. So this is Calling in Favors. It's a level 0, 1 resource event with the Intellect and Agility icon. So I don't think we had that combination on this pack, right? No. Uh, so it's a favor. Do we have that trait already? I feel like we don't, right? Favor, favor. We don't. It's a new uh, type. So that's cool. So choose an ally as you control and return it to your hand. So you choose an ally on the board and return it to your hand. Then search the top nine cards of your deck for an ally asset and play it, reducing its cost by one. No, by X. X is the cost of the ally asset returned to your hand. Shuffle your deck. So speaking of Flare, Flare does something similar. 
it lets you search the top um, nine cards of your deck for an ally and put it into play for well i guess free you pay to flare so this lets you search the top 10 cards for an ally and reduce the cost by x where x was the ally you picked up so i see two good uses for this uh you either play it on like a guardian card like his brother savior or beat cop to to pick them up because uh, they cost quite a lot and then hopefully you've managed to find another savior or beat cop or something else another expensive ally because uh, by doing that you restore their health and uh, well you get to find your other allies or you play it on like one of the miskatonic allies which has a when enter effect like our student where you find one clue is that yeah i think that's our student Let's see, our student. Yeah, so when she entered place, you discover one clue. So if you play Calling a Favor or not, student, you pick her up, you search the top ten, uh, nine cards of your deck, hopefully you find another art student. So that enters play and you discover a clue. And then you can play the other art student that you picked up earlier. Uh, so yeah, you can like bounce allies. You could also play it on Duke. Um, if he has taken quite some damage, because you can play Duke if you manage to get him to your hand. It's quite hard, or had, it has been hard to get Duke back to your hand. But we're calling in favors. It might actually be possible, and it's a way to semi heal the allies because you have to replay them. But um, yeah, it's cool. Now let's see what other allies are there. Probably don't want to do it on uh, something like. Probably don't want to do it on Leo or someone like that, because you probably don't have a better target. But yeah, I think that's it. We have gone through all the how many cards now are we? Twelve cards. Usually twelve cards. I think. So I haven't looked at any encounter cards or stuff like that. I never do that. So I'll be enjoying that on Friday. Um, I hope you guys have found this. Um, this card overlook to be useful and fun and if you have any comments or um, thoughts of your own please leave them in the comment section below and uh, leave a like also and until next pack i'll see you